Now the teams have all started on their concept designs and we thought what better way to share with you what that entails than by showing you what we do right here at Cloud Imperium. Hi, my name is David Hobbins. I'm a concept artist at Cloud Imperium Games. My job at Cloud Imperium entails designing the coolest spaceships possible. And at the moment, I'm working on a new starship called the Mustang. It's a starter ship that will be single-seater. It's going to be small, lightweight, very fast. It's going to be a competitor to the Aurora. When I'm designing for a, a 3D immersive experience, there's a, a number of, of design problems and the collision of all these complex systems. So part of my job is just being a problem solver, figuring these things out so that they work for the in-game experience. When I was super young, I lived close to a, an Air Force base and I would regularly go to air shows and would just be exhilarated by the speed and the shapes of these things. This, I think, led me to uh, study transportation design at Art Center College of Design in Pasadena. At school, I, I ultimately ended up uh, getting more into entertainment design and uh, then I was able to employ what I'd learned designing for real-world vehicles into fantastical vehicles for film and games. Before video games, I've worked for Lucasfilm for a number of years. Um, I also worked for Image Movers Digital, and most recently I worked for an effects studio in London, MPC, uh, for a Marvel project, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. My day-to-day -day process involves taking a design brief and bringing it all the way through to basically a set of blueprint instructions. Essentially, I'm tasked with bringing the ship to life. I always try to approach it like I'm blueprinting a real ship. Even though it's for a science fiction property, it still has to be believable to an audience. I start by very carefully reading over the design brief and the design brief is basically a list of instructions, the big idea of what this ship is. I typically start thinking of words. Um, I think about how I want this vehicle to feel and be received. So, example, it may be fast or utilitarian or robust, even scary. I usually start sketching the idea out. I call these ideation sketches and they're essentially doodles or visual brainstorming. Once I've drawn a number of ideas that I like and I think I have something, I'll typically scan it and import it into the computer. And typically from that point on, I'm working digitally. My process once inside the computer, I usually start working the, the profile or silhouette of the ship. Once I have a, a profile I sort of like of the ship, I immediately start uh, placing and rearranging the major components pilot's cockpit area, the major power plants, fuel, landing gear assembly. All these things have to be contained within the skin of the ship. I'm fighting this design task on two different fronts. One is to have a beautiful shape and the other is to fill all the functional requirements. Sometimes it can be challenging to juggle these two contradictory uh, requirements, but Ultimately, uh, placing these things, uh, these major components in early enough actually can inform the exterior and the overall shape in really interesting ways. And as well, it can also uh, tell the story of the ship's utility and function, which should be obvious as part of its design story. Once I have a, a, a profile and a, and a package architecture, that's an arrangement of all the major components, um, I take that and import it into a 3D application. Uh, from here, I start blocking out rough geometry and, and getting a feel for how this thing uh, looks as I move around it in 3D space. So I've imported the, uh, the profile image plane and I've started to block out uh, some rough geometry here. Okay. So yeah, I kinda, it's uh, different. I like, the, I like the feel. Good, can you go sideways a bit? Oh, cool, you can almost sort of feel like it's a, like a horse up on its hind legs. 
Typically, Chris Roberts and I will interact four or five times on the early uh, concept phase of, of a particular spaceship. I've just been dragging this along and, and doing sort of iterations, adding features, um, and then ultimately I've um, landed on this type of package. Misconfigurations. Uh, the way that Chris and I work together is, is I'll let him know that I have some new art to show him and uh, he'll come over and check it out and we'll start a dialogue. So I guess a couple of things for me would be uh, how are we getting in and out of the cockpit? Is the cockpit going to open or are we going to make a hatch so that you can climb in and out and also use the EVA? Uh, I don't think there will be too much fancy stuff happening on this because obviously it's a lower sort of starter ship. Um, the other things is cargo. Where's the cargo going to be? Well, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, right now, I, I originally I thought that there would be a sleeper cabin here, but what what I can do is just open this up okay. and um, and and put the cargo hold here. Right. Okay. Yeah. No. Because the way I would see it is like so. There, you know, um, consolidated outland. There are sort of new manufacturers. They don't have all the stuff that RSI has, right. and so they probably will be designing their ship to use some standard parts. Okay. So like maybe they could use the standard Aurora container right. and it could just plug in and so that you could just interchange it. Okay. But I would think that, you know, because they're meant to be sort of lighter and faster, they, they couldn't necessarily have the bigger containers, right. just have a smaller just container. The smallest one. Okay. I guess the other thing looking around, you've got the, these two guns gimbaled out the front, which is actually a kind of a fairly big advantage over the Aurora because the Aurora's got fixed guns. And uh, those going to be two guns on the side there yeah, too. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think you put any missile racks or anything in there. I can't remember if in the spec we have any missiles, but uh, um, I don't know about missiles yet. So okay. Well, I'm just trying to think because generally, like right now, the Aurora has all fixed weapons, guns, and so that's not fixed; it's gimbaled. So okay. that's obviously an advantage over the Aurora. So yeah. one thing uh, I would think is perhaps. Maybe this won't have missiles, and therefore that'll be sort of like it'll be lighter, it'll be faster, a little more flimsy, and be sort of more a gun platform. And the, the Aurora would be more sturdy, heavier, could carry more cargo, and then have missiles. And so it's sort of kind of up to what you're doing. Uh, but no, I really, I really quite dig it. So All right, that's awesome. cool. cool. Thank you. Right. I'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another part of the process is that there's an art department in Austin that I'm interacting with. I'll get on a video call with them, get their feedback and ideas. Hey. Hey, man. How are you, man? I'm doing well. Thanks. Great shirts making you look a little big there, Chris. <laughs> Those guns. Yeah. My stomach? It's extra tight. <laughs> I, I have some, uh, some new design work to show you on the Mustang. Um, basically, I've been doing some ideating, and, and I've got a profile sketch and um, and some of the uh, interior architecture figured out. Here's the Mustang profile. Uh, the pink areas are, are where I'm considering making passenger compartments, and I just have the the little Oscar astronaut in there for scale. What do you guys think? So it sits right on its wing, correct, on both sides. Yeah, I thought that the the wings and and landing gear they could sort of remain fixed, serve double duty. I really appreciate the thought that Chris has put into every facet of the world he's creating. He has a, a, a super critical eye that's always asking, how can this be better? How can this be more functional? How can this look better? How can the player experience be better? Once I have a rough block in that I'm, I'm happy with, typically I'll render out a, a quick image and, and paint and sketch over that image, uh, sort of plotting where I might go with graphics and specific surfacing. Once Chris Roberts has signed off on the basic block in and function of the ship, I'll typically uh, go in deeper and refine each of those 3D surfaces. Um, and then here's the rear view with the, the cool. loading fork. Down. Yeah, I like the little custom detail stuff. It's kind of cool. Yeah, that's that's cool. Cool. Well, this is kind of nice on the inside. That's cool. After that, typically I'll start thinking about the livery of the ship, which is basically its major materials and graphics. So that process really involves going back, thinking about the backstory of the particular ship, what I want to convey with these graphics and what its function is, finding reference and and um, Usually I, I 
you know, give Chris a, a number of iterations of which to choose from. Um, so I have these options for you. Uh, so, um, yeah, you know, so I guess one thing, like, and I guess these are meant to sort of feel like the panels. I mean, the only thing is generally that sort of works better, I think, for the bigger capital ships where you sort of have the panels and it gives you a sense of scale. Uh, so it sort of makes it a bit patchy. I mean, like on all these ones, the one that my eye really gets drawn to more is this one, just because I kind of like the, the color and the line detail there. Um, so it sort of it accentuates like that shot there. It's really cool. It really accentuates the sort of, I, know, it's, I mean, it, that thing feels fast. Yeah. It feels cool. It feels sexy. Whereas in like maybe some of this, you don't you don't get the same you know like if you right, take a the, look at the panel break up the, the high yeah. contrast of it almost it slows it down mm -hmm. when chris rejects uh one of my ideas or a particular visual element it it's okay it's it's really just par for the course as a designer critique is the only way i'm going to improve i welcome it Oftentimes, um, at that point, if Chris has signed off, um, I'll be asked to put that vehicle um, into a situation, um, into a world, into a, a painting where uh, people and, and aliens will be interacting with the ship. Um, so wow, that looks awesome. What I've been doing there. Nice. That's pretty brilliant. So I saw these two, they're kind of in hot pursuit. I love that part of the process. I think that's where the ship really starts coming to life for me. I'm super excited about the Mustang and I can't wait for Chris to share it with fans. Getting Chris's feedback throughout the process has been invaluable and I think he's really pleased with the results. Working with Chris Roberts has improved my work and made me a better designer. I hope the teams on the next great Starship realize how valuable this feedback is. I would finish up the little bits of details you want to do and then we can pass it over to uh, the folks to model from your, you know, your base block out. Like Perfect. tracking the progress of the new Star Citizen Mustang throughout the entire season. But now it is time to find out who won the wildcard vault. I had the honor of letting the winning team know that they made the final 16.